Not even in. Was it up? Oh, yeah. Hold on, hold on. I got I, I got it. Hold on, guys. Hold, hold on, on, guys. Hold on. I'm all I'm all I'm all, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all prepared on. over here. Ah, hold on. Hockey. Hold on. Oh, pop, pop, pop. Over here. I'm over here. Vented to my dad about freaking hockey. <laughs> and, and I forgot I had to do a show about boxing. So hold on, guys. Let me, let me put the microphone in. Hold on. Hold on. Ooh, put the microphone in and we'll get this, we'll get this shit popping off properly. <laughs> over here. Woo, but, we we but, should be good now. Let me see. Yeah. Let me make sure my mic is good. Hold on. Let me make sure my mic is good. Make sure the levels are proper. Check, check. Okay, we're good. The Untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, 90 days of boxing, day number 86. Woo. We're getting closer and closer to that time, guys. So, um, yeah, man, going to be an interesting week here. It's, it's a long week for your boy. A lot, lot of stuff going on in my life right now with the playoffs coming up and these lives and just covering boxing and just all kinds of stuff. <laughs> but we're here for it. You know, um, just so you guys know, if you guys haven't checked it out already, um, and I'll show you – I'll actually show you guys. Because um, I, I know this this live is about Jerron Ennis. I, I wanted to touch on the Jerron Ennis, Eddie Hearn signing because when it happened – uh, or last week, I didn't get a chance to really press into it the way I, I really wanted to. So that's kind of what I wanted to do on, on this particular live. But before I do any of that, I wanted to bring this to your guys' attention so you guys can can participate in the special raffle we got going on. So I'm, I'm going to show you guys real quick so you guys can know what to do and participate in the raffle that we have on Wednesday for uh, 90 Days of Boxing, Day 88, if you want to. But go on the screen share. So look, earlier today, or yesterday, I should say, last night, I posted a, I made a community post. It's right here in my community post. So if you go on the, the channel and go to the community tab, you'll see it. All right. It says right here, special announcement in celebration of our 90 days of boxing live series. I've decided to raffle off some of one of a kind boxing memorabilia featuring Inouye and Crawford. Basically, look, guys, I'm raffling off this newspaper right here. So I'm, I'm raffling off two Inouye uh, Japanese newspapers special for, straight from Japan. Um, one of a kind. You can't get them anywhere here in the States. You had to actually know someone in Japan that was sent them to you. So this one right here, uh, this Terrence Crawford picture with my prediction of the fight, which was dead accurate um, in there. And then uh, this other Illinois newspaper. I'm raffling both these things off to show my appreciation to the boxing fans and give you guys some one of a kind boxing memorabilia. All you got to do is just go to the community post and comment down below with your name. And then I'll take your name. I'll write it down. I'll write it down on a piece of paper. I'll cut it up, I'll put it in a hat, and then we'll pick it out out of the hat on Wednesday night at the end of the live. And, you know, you, you guys will get a chance to win, you know, the NOA and Crawford boxing memorabilia. So good deal, right? Right, yeah, Pops? Yeah, definitely a great deal. Pretty pretty, pretty good deal. Can't so beat that. All the way from Japan. All the way from Japan. And, and, yeah, but anyway, listen, let me go ahead and take the time to acknowledge um, the people that have showed up. Shout out to my guy, Lord Zed. He's got his popcorn ready. Shout out to him. We got Jesus M., in the building, we got Eddie Morales. He says, BT and Pops are grinding. Yeah, man. That's, 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 that's the proper word, grinding. I've been grinding my ass off. Good to see you, Eddie. Um, how do you grade the Bivol card? Um, I'm not going to answer that here. I'm going to go live and talk about that tomorrow. This this, this 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 live is specifically about boots, so I'm not going to talk too much about that card till tomorrow. But um, I like the card. I'll say that. Boots will clean up his side. Boots will clean up his side, leaving only Mario Barrio standing. Yeah, let, let, and, we'll, and we'll get to all that. But listen, listen, pops. Before, before before we get into the speaking points, so when you heard that Jerron Ennis signed with Eddie Hearn, what was your first reaction? I think it's great news because uh, nobody can promote uh, anybody like a promoter like Eddie Hearns. So he can get don't know how are you uh, attention. Uh, <laughs> Eddie Hearns can make shit into gold. He's a good salesman, so uh, I expect uh, right now to see boots. Uh, Move up in class and fight whoever's out there because Eddie Hearns will make it happen. Yeah. So there's a lot. There's a lot of layers to all this, and I, I kind of wanted to talk about what all this means, big picture. Now we'll start with this. We'll, we'll start with this. We know he's with Eddie Hearn now. So the question, the first question becomes, who are the potential opponents for Jerron and at 147? Because we know that Terrence Crawford and his team have made it very clear that they don't feel like Boots presents the financial incentive to want to fight him at this moment in time. And they say he brings nothing to the table. So Crawford says that? Crawford and Bomac both say that. Oh, they're fucking full of shit. Right? 
I mean, I, I get it. He hasn't uh, uh, accomplished as much as Crawford, anybody else. So Crawford got, got to say, but the fans, it's like when the fans are demanding that fight, you got to go ahead and go for that fight. You can't just sit back. This is just, this is just, and, 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 and analyze and say, oh no, Boots is not going to bring enough to the table. Yes, he is. He's bringing his talents. He wants to prove it to you guys. Make the fucking fight happen. The fans want to see it. We'll, we'll, we'll get to Crawford and Boots later on. That, that's, that, that's another point. Yeah. I, don't, I, I have the comments here. I don't okay, need to be reading okay, them. Okay. All right. Yeah. But look, Potential opponents, all right. That, that's what I want to discuss because mm -hmm. we know we know Carver's not in the fold. So we're, we're, we're gonna go to screen share. Make sure you guys smash that like button, take the time to subscribe, and if, and if you like, if you've enjoyed these ninety days of boxing, you like what me and pops are doing, then then feel free to super chat as well. They'll, they'll definitely go a long way and help me get these the places travels and my travels and, yeah. and you know cover cover the sport for, for you guys sure, for sure. But anyway, going to the rankings because we know there's a couple of names. So now now that Boots is a match room fighter, he's got a different promotional mm -hmm. setup a couple names jump out at me immediately three names now i'm not gonna lie to you they're not sexy names all right they're not sexy names at all but they're up there but they're but they're names so we'll start with um so one guy i think boots could fight is right here chakram yishoff from uzbekistan you know him no. the wonder boy number 15 he's number 15 in the ibf but he's number one in the wba I know Gishoff is planning on fighting Stanley Honest for the title, um, and he may still do that. But I feel that like if Eddie Hearn like made a, the right offer, that's like a low fight, like for the talent. It is, but the, the reason why I think it could happen, why I, I, I'm I'm putting it as a fight for Boots, is because Gishoff is a guy that's a matchroom fighter. Okay. So anybody who anybody who's a wealthy who's a matchroom, those are automatically like guys Easy that to make. that you can make for Boots. So Gishoff ticks the box. Now Gishoff, you know, just to Talk some Gishoff for a second. Gishoff, I remember. I remember. I was watching. I watched his last fight. You know, he, he, this 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 was a big a big guy with a lot of um. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of hype coming in as a pro because he had a big amateur background coming cool. from Uzbekistan. Yeah, yeah. Um, hasn't necessarily lit, lit the world on fire. I mean, uh, his last two fights, he fought you know a guy we know very well, Harold Calderon. Yeah. Neither one of them really impressed yeah. me in that fight. Like exactly. Harold, Harold didn't do much that fight, nope. and Gishoff didn't do much that fight. They really show that he was better. Same thing goes for. Last fight he had against Pablo Cesar Cano. Yeah. Didn't really show a lot that fight. So my thing is, Gishoff needs a signature performance. And Boots is someone that I think could bring out the best in Gishoff because a lot of his performances have been flat. Okay. I don't I don't put him in the same class as other Uzbeks like um, Odebek Komatov or um, Majimov. Yeah. I, I don't think he's that level of talent. Even like, a, even like a merge on. I don't even think he's a merge on level. Right, right, right. You know, so not saying something because I don't, you know. So that, that, that's one option there with Gishoff. You got any, got any thoughts about Boots versus Gishoff that happened? No, nah, I think he's fighting somebody higher than that. No, okay, well, look. I don't want you mentioned to higher. Him. You mentioned higher. Connor Ben. Bring him in. Uh, Connor, Con Connor, ben and Connor Ben is a guy we know that uh, he gets, he actually, so interestingly enough, mm -hmm. Connor Ben is a guy that his last fight, you know, he, he had a very difficult time. I thought he had mm -hmm. a difficult time. I thought it was a close fight with. Uh, a draw and, and a sparring partner and a guy that we know very well here on True School Sports, yep. Pistol Pete Dobson. Yeah, and um, I mean, yeah, and one thing I like about Ennis, he came out and said that he wants to be more active now with Eddie Hearns, like three or four, three fights a year, or whatever. He wants to be active. He doesn't want to be sitting on the shelf like he was as much with PBC and Showtime. So I, I think I think the 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 boot signing happens at the it's happened at the perfect time as far as making a big fight happen for uh, for for Draw Ennis because again, Connor Ben. If if you're having a hard time and you're looking very suspect and average against Pete Dobson and it's all it's all respect to Pete, but Pete, yeah, I mean, Pete's a good too. Pete's a good solid professional. Yeah. I like Pete, yeah. but draw and it's a blue chip like top shelf up echelon talent. And Connor mm -hmm. looked closer to like what like Pete's level than like a boots level. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he's if they're not careful with Connor Ben, he mm -hmm. gonna mess around and lose. How about, um, and and so so the best course action might be to just cash him out. Yeah, how about Stanis? What about Stanley Honest? He fights at 147. I know he's different thing, but that would be a great fight. You got to put Boots up there with the level that he's at. You can't just sit he's there not gonna get a and, and baby but him. With it's the, not about babying him. He's not going to get a Stanley Honest fight. You don't think so? Stanley Honest is fighting on the PBC undercard. He's fighting a uh, chat. Re, re, well, re, refresh my memory. Who the hell is Stanley Honest well, fighting? I'm saying that, but it's got to be a level to that. I mean, come on. I'm not coming to 147, I'm saying 147, and only fighting the 15th guy? No. No. For me, no. I'd rather see higher than that. But I could be wrong. So Stanley Honest is fighting Gabriel Maestre next. Okay. So if he wins that fight, then that, that's a fight they could explore because Stanley Honest is one of the top contenders. But Stanley Honest, he he fights more like under the PBC better. 
Okay, so that's so, not gonna happen. That's what, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay. So you, you, that's what wasteful thinking on your part. I'm giving you, I'm giving you real, realistic, realistic you, options. Yeah, I don't They're not sexy options. About, I don't, I don't, I don't like. I don't want to see him fight Ski. I only like Gia Shaw. Gia Shaw Saki. Now look, that right there, Jin Yeah, that's the fight. And now Hyro, I don't know, Hiro, I don't know if Hyro's in that chat, but yeah. man, Saki, If there was a fight, if I could, if I can snap my fingers right now. Yeah. And make one fight in the one division he's for fighting Boots. Too, too. He's fighting too. I would love to see Boots fight Jin Tazaki he's, now. He's fighting he, next, he, I think. People so. may say, BT, here you go get with this Japanese, this Japanese <laughs> bullshit. But listen, I don't now do I do I think Jin Tazaki will beat Jaron Ennis? Probably not. not. Yeah. But one thing about Jin Tazaki, he's explosive. Yep. He comes to fight. Yep. Um, you know, he had that he had that one really exciting fight with the Keita Obara where he got dropped and then got up and then st- and got off the canvas to stop him. And yeah. mind you, this could be if if depending on how long Boots decides to stay at welterweight. And I really like this is going to be a bit of a different opinion because I know people don't really care about Jin Suzaki like that right now yeah. in boxing. But this is my opinion. The best thing that can happen to Boots' career mm-hmm. is if this guy wins a world title, because there has never been a Japanese welterweight champion in history. If he wins, a, if he finds a way to win a world title, yeah, then all of a sudden you have kind of like a, I don't want to say it's like an in a way phone situation because I don't think he's gonna be as big as in a way, right? Of course, but you know, it's a guy that will now have had he's gonna get a, big, a bigger deal in Japan, mm-hmm. he'll be the first from Japan in boxing to do something, we'll and now you got multiple countries involved, so now. That would give Eddie Hearn because Eddie Hearn always talks about global expansion, yeah, global yeah. boxing. You know, so <laughs> yeah. globally, this that could be a big fight later on in the line. I don't think I don't, I don't think it'll happen next, but I think if he were to win a world title, yeah, that would be a great thing for Boots' career because right. in that fight, that that fight would, would, would have Boots his name in different yeah. places, yeah. different and, markets. And Eddie, Eddie Hearn's was marking Boots better than anybody else. So. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have to see. I, I, I guess BT's trying to get, get him back. But but, but there's you know, there, there's still other options now. Again, they're not sexy options, so don't get mad at me. I'm, I'm just, I'm just giving messenger. y'all the large picture of what his realistic options are at 47. So Jin Suzaki is not even realistic. Pops just named him, but he's not. Yeah, me, yeah, that's not realistic no. right now. He needs to win a world title, meaning that – and he's – he he can't win a world title, right? Because uh, mm-hmm. unless he goes another route, because look, he's six in the IBF, he's six in the WBA. Yeah. So he'd have to go the, the WBA route or the W or the WBO route, maybe win one of the vacant titles. But yeah. again, I, I reiterate, if he wins a title, that's one of the best things that could happen from if he's gonna stay at forty seven long term. Right, right. So you have him. Um, other option. All right. Now look, again, it's not gonna be a sexy option, but this is this is this is gonna be an option that's easy to make because this guy is a Eddie Hearn fighter and he's fighting. An eliminator suit against Cody Crowley, so maybe whoever, wins, whoever, whoever comes out of that. But Suleiman Sizoko, you know Suzoko? I watched him. the French fighter. He's yeah, fought yeah. on a bunch of cards. Yeah, he's he fought on a bunch of Canelo yeah, cards. Yeah. The uh, Senegalese uh, descent yeah. from France. Right, right. Um, you know, not hasn't. A bad, not a bad fighter. He's not a bad fighter. Uh, Sizoko is a solid fighter. He's not no bum or anything no. like that. But again, it's not like the. I know for boxing fans, it's, these aren't the fights you want to see boots in. But these are the fights that Eddie Hearn we, we literally can make. Gishov, Ben, Sizoko. I'm gonna give you another one that 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 I'll tell you this. You may not like this one either, and you only know you probably don't know who this dude is. But this guy's an Eddie Hearn fighter. So again, anybody who's a welter, who's an Eddie Hearn fighter, who's in the rankings, is a potential boots opponent. Now you got Kona Walker. You ever heard of Kona Walker? I don't know. No, I never heard of him. Kona Walker. He's a 13, 13, 2 one. Five knockouts. I don't, the only reason I know who this guy is is because. Uh, Trayshawn Wiggins called him out, and okay. he said he'd fight Trayshawn Wiggins, and then oh, yeah, now man. all of a sudden he don't want to fight Trayshawn Wiggins oh, anymore. Okay, yeah, I'm the guy, so, yeah, so, yeah. so that's, that's that's the only reason I even know him. I watched him fight one time, you know, textbook British style, you know, upright one two, nothing, nothing but, really too honestly, crazy. Who's gonna get excited watching these? Nobody fights. will get excited. But I'm saying these, boots, these, these are the kind of guys that Eddie Hearn may just feed the boots to keep him active. Okay, so gotcha. like, if, if, if you're talking active, about active if you're finish, talking yeah. about just him staying active and who are the realistic option at 47. I'm laying it out for you. Okay. And you can get mad at that. No, you're laying out the But map. I'm just telling you all the you. truth. I'm, I'm giving you all the large picture. Yeah. You know? So um the fans never get what they want anyways, by the way. Not right away, you know. Yeah. Boxing, boxing is like one it's a yeah. bit of a bit of a tease. It's but crazy. Let's let's go to the comment section. We got my man uh, he says it's not realistic, but I think Haney we'll get to that in the later on. We'll we'll get to that, you know. Yeah. I said a few days ago that Nick Ball for Fear Four being the better be a other car. And you said that, that, that that's not next. No, no, I didn't say anything. Raymond <laughs> Ford said that. I didn't say anything. Oh, Raymond like, Ford said that. I, I, I was going off of I was going off of what Raymond Ford it? said. It? So I didn't say that. Take it, take it up with him. <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> Woo! He said, 
Yeah. And if you don't believe me, why don't you yeah. just go back and watch the interview when, I, when I asked for it in plain English? I said, hold on, hold on. This ain't even about the Saudi car. You guys keep mentioning the Saudi car. I'm not talking about the Saudi car, but I asked for about what his next fight was, and I asked, were you going to find the Shakur card? He lied to you. And he lied to me because it is what it is. So, yeah, so Ray, Raymond, Ford, Raymond Ford, his lying ass yeah. got exposed. I never <laughs> – I only told you what he said. I never. I mean, I didn't care. I, I like the fight. Good for yeah. good. Good for uh, ball. Good for Ford. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. And shout out to you if you got it right. But if you got it right, yeah, good, good for you. Good, I mean, man. I never. Yeah, we, I, I was before. just telling you what he said. Yeah, because it's funny because when we were off air, even today, my son was telling we have lunch together, and he was telling me like, "Dad, you know, Raymond Ford lied to me." I said, "What are we doing?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, today we were talking about lunch. You're like, "What do you mean he lied to you?" I'm like, "I'm like, yeah." I right. asked him all this shit, and he didn't want to give me the right answer. Then I come find out something else through boxing. Yeah, so, so he tried to throw that wrench because he don't want that smoke. He don't shot, want that smoke. Shot, shot said, "Ray." And by the way, guys, tell guys, come on. It's 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 important to make make sure we 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 properly address the Dandara of boxing media. Because this is this is the beginning of the true school to tell era. This is a tell true school era. Make sure you guys tune in Thursday. Sean be here live to wrap up 90 days of boxing with us on Thursday. But he said Raymond Ford wasn't lying. He was just trying to bring um that price up. Okay, okay. Hey, that's right. Hey, <clears throat> anyways, follow Sean to tell that man is the man when it comes to motherfucking boxing. Yeah, so we'll besides see. true school sports, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see how. Shout out to we'll Sean and family. family. Yeah, get like, it again. Those aren't those aren't great opponents at 47, but those like as far as the Eddie Hearn fold. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at him fighting. You know, maybe even throwing like the I think Karen Chukajan and Harry Scarf are supposed to fight in an IBF eliminator. So Yo. maybe if Karen wins that fight, dudes may have to go fight Karen Yo, again. Well, 47 has gone to pieces. It's a shit. Really. Yeah, it's horrible. Like, there's no more one spans and. And what Crawford's and whatever else was in my 47, Kell Brook and so forth. Now it's like it's just going through a transitional. It can be good if certain yeah. fights happen. It can be good if certain fights happen, but, but there's no odds are they won't. There is not a definite undisputed thing. No, it's, no. It's, listen, I mean, I, I, wait, I, I will say, I will say, boots, boots be Stacy, but I don't. I, I'll, I'll tell you what's gonna happen. This is my prediction. I hold think. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Okay. We're, gonna, we're gonna get to all that, man. Don't, all don't, right. don't get ahead. We got, we, we got like a roadmap here. We're gonna okay. follow the roadmap. Okay, okay. But shout out to everybody here. It's your boy BT, the Untouchable True School Sports Empire. Yeah. Um, just kind of just talking about boots. I want to really stick my teeth into this because last Wednesday this all happened. When we were there for the Angelo fight, and yeah. I couldn't focus on this like I wanted to. So now I'm focused on it now. And then tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, I'll, I'll I'll give you guys my pound pound list, and we'll break down the Saudi card tomorrow on, on tomorrow's live. But yeah. um, look, another good thing about Boots signing with, with with Eddie Hearn is that I feel like Boots can really move the needle of boxing in Philadelphia because it's crazy, right? It definitely can. For as much fighters as Philadelphia produces, like think about just the last you know couple of years: Danny Garcia, Stephen Fulton, Executioner, um, even even Bernard Hawkins. A, a, a lot of Philadelphia fighters. Don't get the, uh, afford the opportunity to really fight when they get to a certain level at home and really build their base at home. Right. Boots is the kind of guy that I feel like should be building his base at home. So one of the things I think Eddie Hearn is going to do, I, he should do at least. Yeah. And he will do. If, if past history has shown us anything about Eddie Hearn, the way he moves fighters. I mean, yeah, when yeah. he had Demetrius Andrade, Demetrius Andrade had a fight in Rhode Island. So if, if, if he can bring a fight for Demetrius Andrade in Rhode Island, Definitely for the then surely he can bring – Fights, not fight singular, but fights plural and, and, and to, to Philadelphia for boots. And boots was selling Philadelphia. The people love boots. I mean, people love boots and it's regardless of why Jimmy went to Philadelphia. They got a big he got a good big supporter. No, but I, you know what it is? I don't think enough people know who boots is actually. In Philly, like in the boxing community, they yeah, do. but no, in Philly, they know who the Listen, fuck I'm he a, is. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something about boots. Yeah. I just did. I just did an interview. I got interv I got interviewed recently by a guy right. uh, George Zapata. So right. my boy Zapata boxing. He interviewed me recently, mm -hmm. and he's from the Pennsylvania area. And he was saying a couple years ago, you know, um, I guess he had a kid that was gonna go spar boots somewhere at one of these gyms. Right. It's like a year or two ago, and and the kid's like, oh, he was like, oh yeah, you're gonna spar boots, and the kid was like, well, who's boots? So believe it or not, the hardcore is oh, know who shit. the the hardcore is know who Boots is. But I'm talking about the everyday average the Joe Blow. Not enough people yeah. in the world know who Boots is. That, that, that's what I'm getting okay. at. And Eddie Hearn needs to make sure that he's in Philadelphia, moving that needle of boxing in Philadelphia, boxing there consistently, not just once as a as, as a special occasion. But I'm talking about like like two to three times a year. Yeah. He needs to be in Philadelphia. Yep. Yeah. 
Um, he needs to be at the Phillies game. He needs to be at the Flyers game, the Eagles game, all that. He needs to do all that. He needs yeah. to bang the Liberty Bell, all that stuff. Right. Because uh, there's no reason why, you know, you look at you look at Philadelphia connections to boxing with Rocky and, and, and all the rape fighters like Joe Frazier and all this stuff. There's no reason why, you know, you got the Flyers, you got the, the Phillies, you got the Eagles, and you got the Sixers. And there's no reason why Jerron Boots Ennis, the fighter, can't be a franchise on his own in Philadelphia because he's that talented. He's that fun to watch, mm-hmm. and and all you got to do is just put him in front of people's faces, and they're going to like him. That's for sure. Because he's a great – he's a for fantastic sure. I talent. Think, I think Eddie Hens going to do that, though. I think he's going to put that out there. I don't think that he's not going to take that opportunity to let it go to waste. That's why he signed them, you know? Well, we'll see. We'll see. For sure. And, again, look, it's funny. It's funny. It's funny, right, because when I, when, Sean, when I was on Sean's live mm-hmm. – I was saying things in the comments, and, and 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 he was like, "BT, don't get ahead of me." And now he's doing it. He he's doing it on my live. Yeah. So so tell him, Sean. It's, tell it's, him, Sean. It's crazy how that works. Yeah. Uh, but he said, "How sweet would it be if Eddie Orr paid the shit out of Crawford just to make the boots fight?" I mean, shit, man. You pay like I'm gonna get to that later on. So you're a little ahead of me, but just yeah. to touch on that real briefly, he overpaid. He paid Mike Garcia seven million dollars, and he paid. Jesse Vargas, I think it was like upwards of three or four million when they fought in Texas. Right. So I know that was a while ago. That was that was pre-pandemic. That was four years ago. Eddie's obviously learned a lot about the American boxing market in the four in the four years since. But still, if you can overpay for certain fighters, can you play, can you actually overpay for a fight that we want us that that boxing fans want to see? You know, in Philly, in Philly, or it don't, don't gotta be in Philly. It could be anywhere. Just we want to see the fight. Yeah. So we'll, happen. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Um. So yeah, I, I think you, Boots, I think Boots has a chance to move the needle of, of uh boxing in Philadelphia. Yeah. Now, next speaking point, and by the way, shout out to everybody here. Gerard Ennis is clearly the best American fighter Eddie Hearn has ever signed. And I and I truthfully think, because you know, he Eddie Hearn did a great job of taking his father's company, which promoted some of the biggest events in British box history, right. and he took it to that next level with Anthony Joshua leading the way and, and Carl Froch before, even before Anthony Joshua right. as well. Um, so he, he did a great job in England. He's a he's a legend of boxing promotions in England. Yeah. His biggest test as a promoter has always been in the American market because it's, yeah. it's so different here. Uh, there's so many entertainment options here and things to compete with on a weekly basis when you're putting on a true, card. True, true, true. Um, I've I've been saying recently with, with, with all the lawsuits Boots has had in his career and with guys not wanting to fight him and him being high risk, low reward, but having all this talent. I said, you know, sometimes his career feels a little Demetrius Andrade esque. Now. Eddie Hearn had Demetrius Andre. Mm-hmm. There was a there was a moment in time back in 2018, 2017. I remember perfectly when he signed Demetrius Andre. All the promises in the world were made that Andre was going to get this and that. And, and granted, Eddie was able to deliver him. Yeah, but I don't I don't see Eddie Hearn like keeping boots in the shelf as long as he did Andre. No, no, but he didn't. No, no. But Andre That's wasn't kept in the shelf at first. Andre fought got, got, got was forced by Billy Joe Saunders at the TD Garden yeah. for the Celtics play. Yeah. For the world title, and then Billy Joe Saunders pulled out because of nasal spray, and he tested positive or something. Uh, there was yeah. like a substance in the nasal yeah, spray yeah, yeah. or whatever, supposedly. Yeah, I, and he won. He won a vacant world title against Walter Kakadawa. But anyway, look, Eddie cannot allow this to be Demetrius Andre 2.0. You cannot allow. You you have to find a way to make sure this guy is in the meaningful, important fights in his division, whether it's welterweight or 54. Because look, Andre was active and he was able to get paid and he t- he ticked those boxes but for a long time at 54 and 60 or 60 I should say at 60 when he had them he couldn't get he could never get those fights over the line with the Canelos with the Daniel Jacobs yeah, the because Saunders uh, I mean, never really Eddie happened has, Eddie has got so I, I I view this as Eddie Hearn's biggest test as a promoter he's gonna have to do what every promoter does for fighters that you know are high are quote unquote yeah. higher risk low reward because even though he's got a belt a lot of guys don't think they can beat him because he's very good and the, maybe, maybe the financial incentive isn't there um, for what he what, what they would normally get paid. So he's going to have to overpay and be willing to lose some money to overall get what he wants out of Boots. And that's why I'm saying that's his biggest test as a promoter. He's got to be willing to do those things. Well, isn't that what uh, Sean just came out and said? Sean Patel said? He's talking about specific. Okay. He's talking Crawford. about for Crawford. I'm talking about in general. Okay. I'm talking about you You may – example, right? Boots may, Boots may have to fight – Let's just say he can't get no opponent. His only opponent is Suleiman Sizoko. Now, yeah. Suleiman Sizoko <laughs> has boxed on some of the biggest cards. Yeah. Even though he's not a big name, he's boxed on some of the biggest cards uh-huh. in, the, in, 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 in the in the entire sport of boxing. Uh-huh. And he's highly ranked. Okay. Okay. Now, if Suleiman Sizoko 
if, if he gets a title shot at Boots, and let's just say the money is about, let's say if it's somewhere around 200000 right? I'm just, I'm, I'm just throwing a number out there. Yeah. Eddie may have to pay two seventy five or three. He might have to pay, you, you might have to pay 100000 above market value mm -hmm. just to get opponents in the ring. So forget, it's not even just Crawford. I'm talking about the contenders that need to fight What Boots. do you think about Blair Cobb's fight? Blair Cobb needs to be the easier owner. That's the zone. Blair Cobbs, he's a Blair Cobbs, he, and he's not a zone fighter anymore. I mean, he's a Golden Boy. Do, he's, he's not a Golden Boy fighter oh, anymore. He's a no. He's, oh, yeah, I forgot he's, he's a Don King fighter, oh, and he needs to worry yeah. about Adrian Broner because Adrian Broner is coming for his ass. But <laughs> if they can make yeah, Blair, make a fight. If they can make Blair Cobbs versus Boots at some point, that'd be fun. But yeah, but but they're both Philly fighters. People know who they are in Philly. Blair has. To, it sounds funny to say because we're in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds ridiculous to say, but Blair has to actually beat Adrian Broner. And, and just be serious, and, and just so you know how are you bullshit are you serious? No, they're gonna fight, and just and just so you know how serious it is. Let, let me highlight it for you. Adrian Broner is the number nine ranked WBA welterweight contender, <laughs> and Adrian Broner is also the number fifteen ranked WBC welterweight contender. How do you get the so quick? All right, so you may you may not like it, you may think it's a joke, but when them two fight, it's yeah. gonna actually be a meaningful fight for the, the, for the division and the rankings. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but we can't talk about Blair for boots because. Blair has to beat Adrian Broner. <laughs> we have to see what. No. Okay. So, what do you think, Pops? Do you think do you think this will be a big test for Eddie as a promoter in the states promoting Boots, or do you think you know what Boots is so I, good? I, it's I, it's I, easy. I, I I don't think it's gonna be hard for me if he go, if he puts Boots where he's supposed to put him at to make his money and get the popularity and promote. Eddie Hearns is good at what he does. That's that I will say. He could he, he could get a, a a fighter that's fucking. The, but all 17, 100, oh, whatever, in amateurs, and he can make him feel like a global champion. He hasn't won any fight in the professional level because he talks the shit and he knows how to promote. Jerome and is pretty much known, like you said, only by the uh, the, the in that boxing fan or whatever you want to call it. But I think he will have better success for him because he's learned from prior experience. Absolutely. Um, hold on, mm -hmm. hold on, he says. I'll get to Sean's comment in a second, but the, the Bud Crawford era says Crawford is the face of boxing. He's earned the right to pick and choose who he fight next. Crawford is your king. All right, so I asked Rick Laser this last night on the live. I'm going to pose this question again to the chat. Rick, Rick answered it pretty well, but that's Rick. I'm going to see what y'all got to say. Yeah. What's the criteria for fighters oh, being able to pick and choose what they want to do? <laughs> you know, I thought Rick gave a good explanation, but what do you what what, what, what do you guys say? And, and 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 um Sean says, bro, that pick and choose stuff only happens in boxing. Does LeBron James get to pick and choose who he plays on the schedule because he's 39 and accomplished? <laughs> Hell no. Nah. You know, he, imagine, you know, like, like, Good point, like Sean. for example, Sean, you know, the, the NHL playoffs start on Saturday. Before this live started, I was stressing to my dad about, mm, I was much. telling my dad, I don't want the Panthers to play the Lightning in the first round. I don't want to play the Maple Leafs. So, like, if I said, you know, it'd be great to say, it'd be nice if Matthew Kuchuk could say, you know what? Yeah. We went to the Stanley Cup final last year. We were we were the number one team in hockey. We don't want to play Tampa in the first yeah. round. Give us give us uh give us the Ottawa yeah, Senators. But I, I, to tag along, I'll piggyback and Sean to tell what he's saying. I will say a lot of this I blame on the sanctioning bodies. Period. That's it. Their job is supposed to enforce fights, regardless, and they don't. They get the politics, and all kinds of shit involved, and that's why the, to me the sanctioning bodies are worth a shit. They're gone ball. They just do whatever they want to do, and that's why fighters get to pick what they want. Prime example, Canelo. Yeah. Okay. Follow Sean yeah. tell guys. Uh, he says, Sean, Sean says, Adrian Bona building momentum. He gets beat Hutchinson. Hutchinson. It, that lawyer? It, yeah, the lawyer. That lawyer wasn't I was, shit. I was there. Was he Was I, anything? I was there. Was he, was he, he actually came to win. He did what he could, you know. With, 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 was it the, the level? Was him. he like decent? Like when you put him in that level with I mean, Broner or no? He took him the distance. Okay, okay. You know? Yeah. But you know, the five-time, five-time <laughs> WCW <laughs> champion. That's yeah, right, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. That's when he's making, he's about the millions. My man Hockey says, BT, Boots versus Jin Zaki on the undercard of NOA versus MJ and Saudi is it is not quite good, right? I, I okay, so first of all, you any you already know how I feel about Merge on Aquadalia. You already know that he's like one of the most like disliked fighters on this on this channel. I would I would if NOA is gonna fight Merge on after Neri, then I would just rather go straight to 126 because that that fight's a waste of time. But as far as <laughs> Boots versus yeah. Jin Suzaki, um, I will again, like I said, if, if he's gonna stay at 147 long term, the best thing that would happen to him is if Jin Suzaki won a title and became some sort of star in Japan. And That's uh, the best thing. Another thing is if uh, Eddie's having a lot of fights in Saudi, Saudi, he could probably put Boots out there and, and let him meet uh, Ala Turkey Yashishi, meet him, and find out what Ala Turkey got to say. 
Yeah. So, and then uh, Sean says, absolutely, pops. They never show anybody they can make they can make uh, with the three percent on anybody they, they can make money with. Exactly. Anybody who's anybody who's you know uh, allowing these sanctioning bodies to eat. Because look, guys, I'm gonna tell you guys straight like this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys the, the the real. When you go to these when you go to these conventions like these 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 sanctioning body conventions, they're always like in a nice upscale hotel. And let, and let, let me tell you something. Boxing executives, they don't, and, and, and like whether it be sanctioning body presidents, rankings committee people, they don't eat at no regular restaurants. They don't they don't eat at McDonald's. They don't eat at Burger King. No, no, they want to go to Ruth Chris. They want to go to <laughs> they want to go to the big steakhouse. So, yeah. So I'm look, gonna say, a, yeah. anybody that's gonna allow them to make the money to go to these nice extravagant fancy places, I, of course they're not gonna strip I, them. I told you what I learned this week in boxing, and uh, I put no names out there, nothing. Uh, but I I realized that in boxing. Um, you, uh, everybody, when we, when a fighter becomes known or been active and has been doing good and everything, everyone's a piece of the pie. Like even the little guys, everybody. I'm like, what the fuck? What they want? Where, where were they when I wasn't when I wasn't giving, winning any money or anything? Oh, everybody wants a piece of the pie before the main promoter sign that fighter. It's fucking crazy. I didn't know that. Not for like sure. boxing was so like that. And then I didn't know boxing has so much money. Like they from one day to another, they have to come up also come up with five hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand. When, and when they say they're struggling. My son says, don't believe the hype on a lot of shit. I don't believe the hype. Now, look, people people are starting to answer the, the question that mm -hmm. I want to answer. And, okay. and, and people people are giving great response. So I appreciate everybody's yeah. feedback, interactions. Keep them coming. Mm -hmm. um, my guy Kenton says, cleaning out the division, cleaning out division at the division, at the division. When a win over you puts the other guy in the Hall of Fame, you can pick and choose. So I, I like that answer. Mm -hmm. That's actually better than Rick's answer. Because yeah. Rick, Rick, Rick was like, whoa. Cause I asked Rick yesterday, yeah. when does a guy get a chance to pick and yeah. choose? Cause I, I think I was talking about Canelo, and he's like, "Well, for starters, he's got two hundred fucking million dollars. Let's mm -hmm. start there." Yeah, but yeah. I, I like that answer better. When you when you you when you reach such a status where a win over you puts another guy in Canastota, yeah, that's that's big time. So I, I like that answer. Respect. And then um, Richard says, "I I, I probably got a pass for ducking boots, but Canelo gets criticized for Benavidez, who has yet to activate his mandatory spot." Fair be this. point. Fair point, Richard. Yeah. And then Sean says, "I've asked both of them. I, I've asked both of them about Boots and Benavidez. I'm actually harder on Canelo about it because unlike the Boots fight, there's a fuck ton of money on the table for Benavidez, and yeah. it's been built for years. And the, a, a, as the fight at 160, yeah, I, I mean, know. and Sean's not lying. I was reading about that. Sean's 1,000 percent correct because I vividly remember. I, I vividly remember being in. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys a story. I vividly remember being in Las Vegas on the Strip." There was one night where I was hanging out with a friend who will rename, re remain nameless. Because if I say, yeah, yeah. if I say this person's name, you, you'll know who it is. But it's a, it was a very prominent person in boxing. Mm -hmm. We were sitting down, and I was arguing with them, and um, about Kayla Plant versus Canelo, because Kayla Plant Canelo right. was going to happen a couple of days. And she's like, you know, it was a girl. She's like, you know, I just don't see anybody beating uh, Canelo, but Benavidez. And this is this is 2021 right. back then. Yeah. And even before that, like when Canelo first ended this weight class, yeah, they were talking about him fighting Benavidez. So look, I'm not you you guys know I'm not I know Benavidez is Sean's guy. Like, I'm not no big Benavidez guy like that, but fair is fair. That's a huge fight. So good point there, Sean. And I and I'll say also, I was reading out earlier that uh when Canelo was at 168, one of the first fights that he that he met was a young Benavidez. They actually met and everything. So at that time. Benavides was the was and still was going to be the champion in that you know division. How was getting pissed off because he is like not reading his comments. Okay, <laughs> so let me thank first. How thank you for the super chat, Harold. Yeah, if y'all want to follow us again, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, have so. a super chat. But he said, "When was the last time no, PBC no. and Top Rank did a show in Philly?" Again, Eddie thinks just because you fight in your hometown doesn't make the people attract. That's what they do in. The UK. So, Hiro, since you're, you since you're the expert, expert. in promotions, <laughs> what the, what does Eddie Hearn gotta do to, to promote in America? Oh, what shit. what does it take to promote in America? Yeah. Um, the last time P Top Rank did a show in Philly, to my recollection, yeah. and it could have been earlier, but I remember Better BF versus Vosdick was in Philly, and as far as PBC, I couldn't even tell you the last time they did a show in Philly. It's yeah. been it's been a long time. It's been a minute. It's been a been a hot little minute. So you you do make you make you make good points, Hyrule. You know, you make some good points. Um as far as as far as uh other things pertaining to boots, because there's so much there's so much yeah. to talk about boots. Now Sean mentioned it earlier in the live, so now now it's time to talk about it. Yeah. Right. And we got the whole Crawford Ennis fight. You know, it's a big fight in the division. Um the only reason why I feel like there is a big glimmer of hope for this fight now, not a big glimmer of hope, but you know, a glimmer, a glimmer is a small 
just a small space of hope that that maybe maybe yeah. if 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 things go right, this fight could happen. And personally, I don't even give a damn what way it happens at. It can happen at 54. Yeah. If Carver don't want to fight at four, it can happen at 54. It's just, it's just, it's a great, it's one of those great fights in boxing. You gotta see. Um Eddie Hearn has Eddie Hearn has willingly overpaid guys plenty in the past to make fights happen if he saw value in the fight. Now, Eddie Hearn, this this whole time signed boots, he's given it the whole this I back boots be anybody in the world talk. He's the best fighter I ever signed in America. So He's talking about Jerron Ennis, like he just got Tim Duncan number one overall in the right, draft, right, right. or LeBron James, yeah. or or Connor McDavid, or like a Cam Newton, or like just a, a friend. Like he just got the franchise player, yeah, the number one pick. So if he's the number one pick of Matchroom USA, American signings and American boxing, then he needs to be treated as such. So step one, box him in Philly, get him active, get some get some momentum going for yeah. him, get people talking about, get people fired up about boots, right? And then after you get a fight, maybe two in, you 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 evaluate and you get that checkbook ready and but you make Crawford a serious eight figure offer. How much do you think Crawford? Wants? I just told you what it'll be worth. Eight figure offer, ten million or more. Get the fuck out. He gets fought Spence. They get, they get fought Spence in a pay per view. He's an yeah. undisputed champion. No, he, listen. This is what I'm talking about. This guy get no, 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 no. The value. Terence Crawford earned the right to get paid. Let's not do that. Okay. Because this this the hard this is the hardest sport in the world to make it in. Terence Crawford. No matter what nobody's no matter what I say about him, when, when, say, when it comes to that boxing ring, yeah, he's been he's been he's been champion since 2014. Right. He's been on the power pound list since what like 2014 and 2015 as well. He has been one of boxing's most consistent performers. So he's earned the right to get paid. They know Eddie Hearn is not an idiot. The box industry are not idiots. They know what number it would take to get Crawford in the ring. It's, it's all about timing and it's all about Eddie Hearn getting that money right to make the fight happen. It's as simple as that. Yeah. If the dollars make sense, the fight will happen. Yeah, for sure. What do you think? Yeah, I guess so, but I just like you. Yeah. You don't think Terence Crawford deserves ten million? Yeah, five boots. He does. He two tw twice undisputed, uh, three division champion, already, yeah, two division I mean, lineal yeah. champion. I mean, he, he, he's out. He's already a Hall of Famer. He's already yeah. a Hall of Famer. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah, you you're asking him to fight. You're you're not asking him to fight no bum. You're asking him to fight the the, <laughs> the, the, the young killer of the division. Yeah, yeah. So so he should be uh, 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 compensated appropriately, right? Boots should also be. Compensated who appropriately. You, who, who you got to fight? Oh, Terrence Crawford by UD, not by stoppage. His, his, yeah, man, got some, his streak's coming too. That's a, that like, and he's a lot younger too. Who? Uh, Boots Ennis. I, I got Crawford, but I'm just saying by stoppage I, or knockout. No, or? ain't gonna be no game dance stoppage. You don't think he's gonna knock out Boots? Nope. I think I, I, I think, think, I, I, I think the UD. I think the, the skill level that Boots is in, the movement, the way he does. It, I don't think he knocks him out for the whole. You know, not him. I just think yeah. Terrence has better feet. I think, I think yeah. Terrence has better feet than him. Then, well, are you saying that because he couldn't handle that guy that was running around the ring and cutting off the ring? That's um, part boots? of it. That's part of it. Yeah, I mean, Karen, yeah. People don't was. like when I bring that fight up, the Karen fight. Yeah. Because they say, oh, well, he, he won like, every round. But, like, yeah. no. There, there were, there, I saw enough in that fight to, to see that, okay, if you move on him a little bit and a guy maybe some who could punch on the move, mm -hmm. which Terrence Crawford is a master at punching on the move, that would give him some problems. So, so you're saying he got better moves? I think he, I think he, I think it'd be a good fight. I think Boots gives him a lot to worry about in the early rounds. But once you get to those middle rounds where, where it's all about experience and you know all those kind of things, if, yeah. if his legs hold up, he's gonna. I think he all box his Boots. Okay, you know, good fight. Shout out to my guy Ryan Frazier with the super chat. Shout out, Ryan. He Thank says you. Al has to go to Big Turkey to put up the money for Canelo versus Benavidez. What do you think? What's yeah? What you say, pops? Al has to go to no. The Turkey, if Turkey really wants that fight, and, and, and people, the public wants it, and, he, and somebody just ring his, bring it, bring, what I say, ring it to his ear, show, talk to his ear, and let him know about it. I think he can make the fight. I don't think else got to go. All else to do is bring his fighter there and say, this, this is a big fight. The public wants it. We're going to make big money off of this. The Saudis, you'll make money, and I will make money. And I guarantee you, at least Sheik Turkey will do it. Exactly. Exactly. What he said. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah. Uh, Sean says Crawford's a little more compact in exchanges to amazing exchanges. Those would be, he's also smarter and tucks his chin in a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. Uh, uh, he's more of a sharp shooter, like boots, boots, his punches have a bit more fat on them. Terrence Crawford's punches are a little straighter. So I would, I would agree with that. Uh, Terrence has also shown better uh, ring IQ against higher opponents, which again, that's not yeah. completely boots' fault because again, a lot of these guys, I know don't want to fight him. Um, and he says Crawford is not fighting boots for no 10 million. That is true. He might want like 20. Are you serious? He might like he might want like he might want like 20 
plus pay per view upside. I mean, he gets beat. Listen, you gotta look at it from Terrence's perspective. Everyone for for years built, built up that Spence fight. Right. That was like his Super Bowl. That was his Stanley Cup. That was his World Series. That was his Champions League final. Yeah. And he not only did he win that fight, he won it in like extremely sensational fashion. Yeah. In true. memorable fashion. You know. Yeah. Dominant fashion. So he's gonna feel like you know what my pay grade ten million is great money, but my right. pay grade supersedes ten million, and you need to come even more correct. So you look, think that fight's gonna sell? I, I, the only place it's gonna sell is in the U.S. I mean, that's the only place it needs to be. Yeah. It need to be in Saudi. Yeah, yeah. Like, I know, like, 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 like but the it, money's there, though. You buddy. know, shout out to if you know, listen, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, 20, yeah, I'm, I'm no hater. Listen, I'm no hater. You know, I'm glad that but, uh, Philip Hargovich is fighting Dubois. There's some good fights yeah. happening on Saudi, you know. Yeah, but, but not every fight needs to be in Saudi. Right. But if if, if you're going to make the big money fight and the fights are big money and the promoters and everybody's going to get I will, I will have the fight there. Why not? I mean, yeah, yeah. If that's the best route to make the fight, go ahead and make the fight for the fighter's there. sake. But, but I'm just saying, like, so okay, yeah. If for that fight, listen, for that fight to be all it can be, it needs to be in America. I know that's not popular to say these days because yeah. you know everyone. You know, I'm not trying to hate on Saudi, but yeah, yeah. for that fight to be everything it can be and more, yeah. it has to be in the USA. Seriously, I think so. In I, Philly? No, in Las Vegas. Las Vegas or New York? Yeah, I actually think New York. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't, they don't want to bring the big fights to New York no more because in New York they got the they got high taxes. They have a they have a TV tax also that's that's imposed on the fights as well. Over there. Point, so promoters can't though. keep as much money and it's harder to turn over a profit. But th- like I said, for that fight to be all it could be, it would have to be in the USA. And if yeah. not, if not Vegas, then give me give me Madison Square Garden. How about that? How about the Spectrum in Philadelphia where fucking um boots is from? You know how much I would sell over there? No. Neutral ground, Madison Square Garden. Okay. Because Terrence is fought at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> and we we took the bus from yeah. New York to Philly. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's not that far away from Philly. No, so it's not. Yeah. That's, that's the perfect menu. You got to bring it to New York at some time. The, 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 what's the, uh, the thing of boxing down. You would rather not have the fight at all? I don't know if it, which fight are you talking about? Um, Boots is, ta- is talented, but is he marketable to where you can make back millions? You lose. That's okay. That's that's the now. That's that's the good point, Sean. I, that's I, a good yeah. point. Follow this channel, guys. So, this so, channel is so is Boots marketable enough? Again, I don't think I don't think Boots has ever really been Market, uh, totally. marketed to where you could even know that. So you won't know until you actually put the dollars behind them. Mm-hmm. If 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 Eddie Hearn puts the prop, if, if Eddie Hearn puts marketing dollars behind him and he begins to develop a, a big base in Philadelphia and fights are selling out, they could start off something small. They could they could start off at the twenty three hundred arena where they do where they do regional fights there. Then they can build up to mid tier venues like the Lacora Center where they had um better be versus um for boots v- Bosdick and then if he really really gets momentum going he can headline that uh, with, with a Sixers play at, at the uh Boots the, is big in Philly. I think he is I might be wrong. You, 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 does he sell you, a lot? You just going off of us being in the gym. Yeah and the name you know boots don't go nowhere but the gym. So like there's a bunch of people in Philadelphia that that, that like they don't know who he is because all he does is just be in the gym all day. <laughs> I think somebody told you that before. He, say, he just goes to the gym. He just goes to the gym, which, 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 isn't ba- which isn't bad. So he don't talk a lot either. He just tweet. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah. Right. So, Iro says, "Is Azubio 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 Pedroza school Salvador Sanchez?" Tell Sean. Yeah. So Sean, um, oh, here we go. Hiro, 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 I guess discovered who uh, is uh, Zubio Pedroza was the other day, and he says that Salvador Sanchez duffed him. If you have an opinion on that. <laughs> Feel free to <laughs> drop that down yeah, below. Yeah, let him know. Let him know, Sean. Tell him, Sean. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I think, Sean, that's what he's going to have to do. I think Eddie would have to take that chance. If if you if you view Boots as this, like, number one draft pick. Like okay, he, thank he, you, Sean. He just landed LeBron James. He just landed Tim Duncan. He just landed Connor McDavid, all right? Mm-hmm. Number one draft pick. He landed Aaron Eckblad. You need to treat him as such. You need, to get, you, you, you need to give him a chance to actually flourish as such. You can't get the guy, give him the lip with the hype, and then not actually try. So well, you if, gotta, if, 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 if he puts the, the marketing dollars behind him and people don't come out to see him, okay, then he's not, he's not no star. Yeah. You can't do that well, long term. But I think, you got to try. Said, like you say, he's got to market him, have a lot of autograph signings in Philly, have a lot of shows in Philly. You know what I mean? That's one thing else about Crawford. Crawford, uh, in his community, that's a lot for his community. He's been really active in there in, his, in Nebraska. And look at that. He's fighting fucking Nebraska. He it's not even Philadelphia. And I get it. Yeah, that's the hometown or whatever. But he's out there being actively with the community. Once you get involved with the community, you get some kind of exposure. 
it might work for you. I mean, is he actually says Crawford isn't fighting boots and yet I mean, is he U.S. manager? <laughs> he's probably right though. He's yeah, yeah, right. you probably calling him then right. Vegas. Tell then Vegas. Then just do it in Vegas yeah. then. Do do this shit in Vegas. You could do it. In I mean, one of the Vegas is there. great. I mean, that's uh you got the MGM, you got I mean uh, having Crawford behind it and what he does and what he brings to the table. And <laughs> look, I like that. Look, I like that. <laughs> look, we're gonna switch gears right yeah. now. We're, we're, we're gonna go a bit. We're gonna view off a little bit. I, I know Sean's gonna have some good comments with it about this in the chat because this is this guy I'm about to mention is someone he knows very very well, and maybe this is wishful thinking. I'm thinking outside the box a little bit, but look, I won't rule it out. Yeah. Could the big world twenty two fight for Jerome Ennis be potentially a guy at one forty? The guy that's fighting this weekend, Devin Haney. You know, Devin Devin has teased a move the world twenty many times. He's talked about fighting Mario Barros at 147. So my thing is this. If you're gonna fight Mario Barrios at 147, yeah. why not fight Boots? You have you like you uh, Devin has had a working relationship with Eddie Hearn. They're still cool to this day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he's he was signed to him at one point. Um, you know, we know Devin doesn't sign long-term deals with promoters, so this you know, this golden boy stuff will run out quickly, mm -hmm. could be a one-off. Why not explore that as a future fight? If Boots gets the proper momentum, why couldn't Devin Haney versus Jerron Ennis be the big uh, well played super fight? Now, granted, Boots is a big gargoyle of a man at 47. He could be at 54 oh or 60 pounder. You've seen him in person. You've seen wow. him spar. He's big a, man. Yeah. But if Devin Haney is who he says he is, which I, I, I want to think the best. I want to give people the benefit of the doubt and be optimistic. Why not go for that gusto? You're going to be Ryan Garcia. I mean, Ryan's going to get DQ'd. Gonna be not gonna get DQ, please. Ryan, <laughs> not gonna DQ, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan Garcia, Ryan Garcia anyway, is gonna get honestly, disqualified. Yeah, no. All right, it'll be a, it'll be an uneventful night. It's not gonna happen. Hopefully for Sean, everybody is going to the fight. I'm wrong, and it just happens to be a great he, fight. He's for definitely boxing. wrong, guys. I don't know. If he's <laughs> love, think, too much level. I hockey, think I love a boxing. I don't. I think Ryan will lose by DQ. Look, 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 look. I don't think. I personally don't think Devin's gonna be at 40 for too long. That's what I believe. I mean, he's filling out big. He's filling, he's out, filling out quite big, quickly. Though, I'll say that. So I think maybe at top, at best, we're looking at maybe I want to say two, maybe maybe three fights left at forty. I would like to see do you him think let me go ask, for the gusto and fight Boots at forty-seven. Because look, because look, okay. hold on, before I let you go, because and I'm gonna bring and, and Sean's made this point before. Yeah. I can't remember if it was it alive when we talked, yeah. but like Devin, Devin yeah. is what is he you know, like 25, 26, something like that. Mm -hmm. He's like in his mid twenties, yeah. I want to say. Uh, maybe younger. Yeah. Terrence Crawford was like 37, 36. Okay. Right? Now, you wanted to go to 47 to fight Barrios, but you won't go to 47 to fight Crawford, the guy that you're like 10 years younger than. And, oh, and, 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 his, and his number, No, no, no. Uh, but, but okay. Talking about Crawford. Yeah. Crawford is the number one pound pound fighter. You beat him, that puts you in a in a whole other stratosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I mean, uh, since you don't want to fight him, well, let me ask you this question. Why not fight Boots? Let me ask you this question. That's easy to make. Let me ask you this, were signed to Eddie. Let me ask you this question, Brendan. Who's more popular between the two? Between Devin and uh, Jerron? Yeah. Oh, Devin. For sure. For sure. That's not even. The, and you think um, he will sell more seats in Boots right now? Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But I would like—I mean, I—I I would like to see the fight. You know, just like because because I, if that fight happens, I'm running with boots. I guess uh, Devin Haney. Yep, I like Devin Haney, with Mr. Haney. You always tell me I don't, but I got to ride with boots. There's no fucking way he. Be, you don't. But the thing is, you see how big boots. You is? don't pick Devin for any fight. Are, yes, you, are you picking Devin against Ryan? No, I'm picking Ryan. Just uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? Go Ryan. I think Devin will probably whoop yeah, up just, Ryan. Yeah, just 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 call it what it is. You don't you don't like Devin Haney's fighting style. That's okay. We go through this all the time. No, no, no. But hold, on, hold on. I do like guys. guys hold, on, hold on. You can't keep saying you like Devin Haney's fighting style. He actually style. Uh, and then and he, then he, and he, he impressed me when he out jabbed the shit out of uh, Progress. Progress. And who did you pick that fight? I have Progress, <laughs> but I'll be honest with you guys. I don't think they will be. Uh, he will not. Beat Jerome Ennis. I'll tell you right now. But the thing is, be a guys, he can fight anybody. When he it wants, comes to that, he's not fighting. But guys, when it yeah. comes to that, hey, <laughs> don't take nothing he says serious because I don't. Pick, you're not even picking him against Ryan. No, I think. Ryan, Why are you picking I, I Ryan? Think, I, I just think Ryan. Come on, Ryan got, Ryan got more pop than uh. I don't mean Devin. anything, Ryan. Devin, Devin, Ryan, if he, if he might out with like progress, I should take him about progress. And by, how the subscribers say, whatever pop says, believe the opposite. opposite. <laughs> you're, 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 you're definitely, you're definitely like playing devil's advocate. Um. Uh, Hyro says Eddie Hearn disrespected Art to better BF for no reason. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't see the whole thing. I mean, thing. That, I was gonna say that for tomorrow's live, but pretty much to, to summarize what he said, mm -hmm. he said that better BF is arrogant. 
And he said Bibble, and then he, he told Bibble that uh, he said Bibble was gonna do a job on him, do a master class performance on him. He just saw him the fight. I'm gonna tell Eddie like this. I don't think Eddie. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Eddie, I'm gonna tell Eddie here like this. You better stop barking up the wrong damn tree or better be up because you might get you might get Bibble seriously hurt. I am trying to tell you, uh, <laughs> we have to give respect to. Uh, I like both fighters, but I just think better be it's a beast. Yeah. Hermino says, uh, Boots would take some years off Devin Craney's career. Boots done cooked up a couple of pros and changed them for the worst. Hello, man. If only y'all could come to these gyms in the city. Tell him, Gerald. Tell him. Well, tell him. Well, I'll tell you Boots, this. I'll, I'll tell you this. Woo! Me, me, and, up and stand up. me and Pops, me and Pops were, uh, were blessed to see Boots spar once in the summer yeah. of 2022. And uh, he didn't even, he wasn't even going 100%. We nah. saw him because when he spars guys that are from his gym, he don't go 100% on them. No. If that was only 50 when we saw him. I can't imagine what 100 was like. I'm telling this you. This shit was crazy. I, I like Devin. So I'll, maybe one day he'd be cool. He's but. a boxer. But he's not a fighter boxer. He's just he's more of a boxer. I'm talking about Devin. Boots can bring it and knock the fuck out of you quick. I ride with Boots all day on that. Phil Duffy stand up. Devin and, and Bill, respect to you guys. I like you guys. My son begs to differ. I just got to don't like. You don't like Devin. The young buck is trying to school uh, 147 like 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 Boots. You out of your damn mind. Oh, and it, you can win all the titles. Oh, okay. Chris the Plumber says, Boots stops Devin in less than nine rounds. Thank you. Thank you, Chris the Plumber. That's you think, right. You think, you think Chris the Plumber knows boxing? I'm telling you right now, Devin, I, I respect him. We take take the challenges. Uh, he ain't beat no, no, no Boots. I don't know what Sean, wants to I know. I know what Sean feels. Sean probably goes with Devin Hanging. Hyro says, if Luis Ortiz were to beat Jared Anderson, he'd, he'd become my fair heavyweight. <laughs> That's how, that's how, that's how you I, I'm a big fan of OT. You, 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 you saw you saw because Bob Barron called Bob Barron went on Twitter today and called out the whole heavyweight division. He said, We're looking for somebody who thinks they can really beat Jared Anderson. Step up. And then Salute has got in the sponsor off item. There you go. That's my Cuban boy. I mean, we're, 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 we're flipping all over the place, but I'll tell you, Jared's his mind's not in the boxing right now. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's just not right. He's not. You can see it. I don't know what's I mean, look, we all we all, stuck up we the all place. have we all have personal demons. I actually went back and I watched uh me and me and Harold were watching this video the other night of um, Jared Anderson when he got arrested or whatever. Yeah. And uh like his car, like there were like Hennessy in his car, he had a gun and he smoked, <laughs> like so he's got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you know? They want to know why 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 do you uh why do you like Yeah, hey, hey, this is a uniform? I don't know if it is, hey. How about now? How would I look like a young buck now? How I look now, Al Pell? Shout out to you. Maybe you're right. They won't fill the place of 15,000. We'll see Saturday. I imagine they will, though. People just wanted to see if Ryan will make it to the fight before they even buy. That's what I'm saying. Um, I think Ryan sell. I, they both sell, but I think Ryan's going to sell with the fight more, I think. You don't think so? I think he sells. I, I really just hope for the sake of boxing that fight actually winds up being good because I think it's anybody's by disqualification. Fuck you, you I don't know. I want to bet. I want to bet on it. I want to put you 100 on it. Damn mind, bro. I don't know what hit you, Rock, or something that's not happening. Um, if when it happens, bow down to me. What? How, how many? How you many? How down. many subscriptions you think they're gonna they have for the whole fight? Your prediction: one hundred fifty thousand. I don't know. But what's a, what, what, I don't what, have a prediction. What's a decent? Uh, but what's a de decent? If uh, they could do four hundred thousand or more, that'd be good. But uh, okay. You know. Uh, John says you, Devin is more popular. Back to back to back pay reviews sold at the MGM with Lomo sold out San Francisco. Are just gonna okay. sell out at some ticket prices eventually? Uh, with Ron exactly, okay. yeah. De De Devin, point, Devin did a great job selling out the Oracle. Um, Sean, are, was, you, are you riding with Devin Haney? I know you're a big Devin Haney fan. <laughs> Come on, Sean, you can tell he me. He says if your DQ pick habits, it, it'll be the most epic show. Let's listen. Get ready. Get ready, man. This guy comes up with crazy shit. He gets it right most of the time, so. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I don't know what happened to him. This if he had a bad dream or somebody banged him in his head or something. I don't know. Well, let's stay on topic, man. Um, last thing as far as I want to get to, then we could we, we could just talk after this is done. But yeah, how long? How long until Jerron Ennis becomes a fifty-four pounder? Because we we started out the live talking about what are the realistic options for Jerron Ennis as a welterweight, as a forty-seven pounder. They weren't very attractive options that I gave you, right? right? right. So. Look at that 54, because 54 is really and truthfully where the most attractive fights for Boots yeah. are. You got, um, just looking at the champions right now, you got Israel Majimov, who a lot of people want to see in fight. We'll, we'll get to Is Majimov in a second, because that, that's a fight that can happen. Mm -hmm. You got Bakram Merlatsia, who just beat uh, Jack Kulke in a very entertaining fight for the okay. IBF belt. Um, you got Fundura, who has, I think he's not, he's not going to vacate the belt because, yeah, something happened. I could be wrong. Something, I think he has to vacate the belt that. because of the injuries. And then the WBC belt right now, I believe, is uh, it's either I know Boa Chuck just beat 
Mendoza. Yeah. Uh, so Boa check me had to fight for the interim, or maybe they'll elevate him. Who knows? But um, they can do that though. Injuries. What they can? It's bad. I mean, he had to sit out because because um, in his case, Fundura because the winner of that fight was supposed to fight Terence Crawford in a certain amount of time. So if he can't physically fight in that certain amount of time, he he's gonna have to vacate the belt. But they can work out an agreement where the winner of that fight will start to fight him once he's healthy. So oh, okay. that, happens, that happens in boxing. But anyway, 54. This is where I think the more attractive fights for Jerron Ennis are because you got guys like, um, we'll start Majimov, the WBA champion, right? Now, Majimov, very good fighter. You know, probably in my opinion, I call him the golden boy of Uzbek boxing because he's the most popular Uzbek fighter. He's the most athletic Uzbek fighter. And yeah. he's probably the best Uzbek fighter right now because mm -hmm. we know that a lot of the Uzbeks have been letting the country down, you know. Unfortunately, Odebek Komatov couldn't hold, couldn't just for seven more seconds get to the damn yeah. bell. He lost to four. You know, merge on is merge on, and you know, he's to me, he's the best. So, um, I think Majimov versus Boots would be a very, very good fight. Um, Majimov coming to the division, very, very athletic. Um, probably one of the most athletic fighters in and around those weights with his footwork. So, I've seen him. I don't, I don't think it'll be Boots, but it'll be, it'll be a good fight, though. Yeah. I think the fight that people want to see 154. But we know what the fight is 154. Okay. And the fight that I think boxing fans as a whole and in general, people in the industry need to start talking it up yeah. is Boots versus Virgil. Because Boots versus Virgil is where it's at. That's that's the that's the Eagles Cowboys of, of, of boxing right that there. Fight. We need that fight. Um team two. Rick Laser last night when I brought up Virgil Ortiz, he 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 said that there's no way that, that Vir 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 Virgil and Boots are gonna fight. Ever? I don't know. He didn't say ever, but he could say anytime soon. No, of course not. They get they get they, they get a prime Virgil too. So they both new. But to my the, thing is, they both new okay, to, look, to, to, to the division. No, so I yeah, hear that. What what is it a prime? I mean, Virgil Ortiz got one of the best power jabs in the business. He's got a one hundred percent knockout ratio. Yeah, he, he he's boxed a good amount of rounds. Um, mm -hmm. obviously, I know he still needs more experience, a little more experience. But I mean, come on, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you got you, you got to get moving. You, you you can't have boots and Virgil Ortiz. Just be there. 30 years old, 31 years old, 32 years old, not fighting each other. No, I get it, but, but fight, fight. Not it don't gotta be right now, but like within a year's time, you know, get Virgil two solid fights, yep. get boots, you know, this this, this one little fight at 47, mm -hmm. move up before the next fight. Get like, get like like it's gotta happen before, 18, so, yeah. Like in the next two years, I feel like it has to happen. It should happen because that, that's a great fight for boxing. And look, if it winds up being the fight I think it can be. Mm -hmm. Do a rematch. Do a trilogy. And I would like to say, uh, even when uh, Tim Zhu is here, so I think Tim Zhu should be thrown in that. If, if Virgil fights Tim Zhu or uh, all the other big names, I would like that. I, I mean, this one, this one, my, right now, there's no big this names one, there. This what one, might, this one might be an outside shot, but um, no. I know, I, I know you're gonna say you don't think this yeah, is gonna happen. But not. look, I'm not saying now, but I'm saying let's say three, four years time, three, four years time, when when Peter Khan finally feels like like this kid developed enough, we've seen top rank and we've seen match room. Work together in the past. Why not Xander versus Boots? That fight, I think, in three, three, three years time, three, four, not, not now. Good when, he, when, he's 20, not when he's twenty, when he's twenty five, when he's like 24, 25, and he's developed, and he's got like, I want to see him do better. I, I, last couple of fights, I like what I see from him, but it's not like we was. I don't know. I just don't. I, I, I can't see him being the top, top, top of one fifty four. But I, I wish he's still developed. He's twenty one. Yeah, he's twenty one years old. I want to see him. He's twenty one years old. Uh, I'm telling you, I mean, Peter. We, and he's getting bigger and bigger too. I mean, I talked to Peter. I, I just seen Peter Khan at the Panthers game. What he told you? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Peter, Peter, Peter Khan. You know, when I interviewed him last time, he was very adamant about just it's all about development. I mean, when you look at Xander, he had he's got 71 rounds in the pros. Virgil Ortiz has boxed 70 rounds in the pros. Okay. So even though he's younger than Virgil, even Virgil had boxed the same amount of rounds because you know Virgil was knocking everybody out early in his career. But you know um, I go for they fight. Hmm? You know, they have a fight. Who I go for? South Florida, you know, for Xander? I'm going with no, South Florida. I'm buying, I'm buying with Ortiz. Who you're picking or who you're rooting for? I'm rooting for, uh, for uh, who you're rooting for I'm Ortiz. I'm, I'm going for Ortiz. Ortiz is better. And you're rooting for him? Yep. I'm not doing that. I'm rooting, I'm going with South Florida. I got I, I gotta be loyal. You can be loyal. I love him too. He's Puerto Rican. I love him too. No, you, you don't. Know. Here we go. No, you don't. <laughs> Here we go with this. No, again. but but I think I'm not saying now. I'm saying if everything goes right, I'm saying three years from now, when 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 Xander's like 25 and 0, if he's 25 and 0. Okay. And and he's filled out and he's developed to the to the to the, to the level that Peter Cowan want and Boots is you know doing his thing. Why couldn't Boots versus Xander be a big fight one day? It could. I don't see why that couldn't be a big fight one day. It could be top ranking. I mean, 
for Philadelphia promoting, it'd be great. I mean, what else? I mean, you got you got Josh Kelly. What happened, what happened to this weight class? What do you mean? It's a good weight class. It's decent. What, what do you oh, call- Mendoza. I like Mendoza. If he's in it. He's a PBC fighter. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about who's a Dizzo. So anybody, anybody with a PBC, just get it out your head. Okay. Odds are they won't fight. <laughs> Holy shit! So you're saying you're playing match room basically, right? I'm saying yeah, mostly yeah, match room guys okay. or, or top rank. You know, there's there's a small chance of the top rank guys as well. So I'm I'm looking at I'm looking at them fight. I'm yeah. looking at Virgil. I'm looking at Madrimov. Um, I'm being I'm being a bit of an optimist, and I'm hoping that maybe Tim Zhu or not Tim Zhu, uh, not Tim Zhu, uh, Xander in like three four years. He could be, that yeah. could be a fight. I so mean, I'm not hating on the guy. I just I just want more up from him. He wants more. He's not the next Puerto Rican star. I told you that. Anyway, l- let me get us some comments. He says, uh. Pops asked what I thought about Boots uh, Dever earlier. I said it earlier, BT. What do you say? He said laugh, yeah. <laughs> well, he said Devin. Sales he said mode. scroll up. He said scroll yeah. up. Okay, okay. let me yeah, scroll yeah. up for his uh. Guys, follow Sean Sattel. That man knows boxing. I'm trying to tell you guys. If you guys been in boxing for a long time, you know where he came from. Follow Sean Sattel. He's got Vegas Sports too. Follow that channel too. I'm trying to find it. I can't find it. I remember the part where he said about that Devin sells more. He's done two pay per views and socials. That's 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 what I remember. But I mean, uh, Sean knows. But Sean's big on Devin. He said, "I'll put everything I own on Boots versus Majimov." Ooh, okay. Let me see. I mean, Wayne Williams put in the building, Philadelphia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about that? That that, that I don't know if you feel like these are Uzbekistan or what country. Lord, Lord said, Lord said, said, "LOL." Pop said, "What happened to this weight class? It's not what it, it's not what it was." He's right. <laughs> but there's one guy I like, Brennan. I I think he fights for Golden Boy. He wears a Mexican hat, but he's from like Uzbekistan or something like that. I think he's a 154. He's, young. he's not 54. He's 68. You know what I'm talking about? Back to Malakuzia. Yeah, 68. Oh, he's that big. Yeah, he's big. Holy shit! Yeah, I would big, love him. Big, big, strong, like big, strong guy. He's young too, right? Well, let's say, speaking, I don't know yeah. his exact age, but you know, oh, he's fucking one sixty-eight. Yeah, I yeah. thought one fifty-four. Yeah, so. so yeah, but yeah, we we pretty much touched about about. We spent a whole hour just talking about boots. I, I really want to see him do well because I feel like he does have value to bring to not just boxing, but more importantly, American boxing. Which you know, I I feel like American boxing has seen better days. And when you watch the, the Jared Anderson fight, you really realize that American boxing has seen better days. So Yeah, uh, man. But I just say like this. Uh, everybody got their opinion what they want. We just have to see. Oh, yeah. Well, what, Castanio, yeah. He's right about that one. I like Castanio. You don't like him? I like Castanio, but yeah. where, where is he at? His last fight was against, uh, what's his name? Uh, Charlo. Yeah, Charlo. Yeah, you know how long ago it was? Over two years ago. Jesus, he'll be back. I, but you're right when? about that, Rocky. <laughs> He's supposed to be back a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. When? With the PBC? Yeah. So there you go. He's he's coming, to Mr. Mr. Al Heyman. Two, Keeping everything in the show. PBC break. So, yeah. It is what it is, man. But look, there's no there's no shortage of options for Boots out there. I hope that uh, they do right by him at, at, at Match Room and and um, looking forward to seeing how everything that plays out. But my man, MECBX, he ain't, he ain't too happy with Jose Ramirez and Virgil Ortiz on the same card. He thinks it's bullshit. They both are fighting together. Because um, next weekend, next weekend, you have uh, Jose Ramirez taking on Rancis Bartholomew and Virgil Ortiz is fighting. I mean, fuck up Ramirez. Yeah. Ramirez, uh, uh, I forgot what, what fight he turned down. Then he went left Golden Boy or did something else. His time is up. Uh, a lot of fights. It's, it's, it's too many to keep track of. Yeah. It's way too many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He says, um, by the way, shout out to Ismael Ramirez for Thank the you, uh, $10 yeah. super chat. Gracias. He says, Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia is a 50 okay. 50 fight. Ooh, I could go with that. I can go for that. I can go for that. Oh. Daryl Hall now. You yeah, got, yeah. You, you got possessed like yeah. he was Daryl. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just saying I've got, that that could be that too. But I'm right. I'm right with Garcia. I personally, like I, I love plot twists, and I would all, I would love to see Ryan win just because. But there's no just. I don't know where. I wish you would tell me how you got that DQ bullshit. But it's just unfortunate. Maybe it's <laughs> natural juice you drink. It's just it's just unfortunate he's gonna look for a way out and get disqualified. I don't know? think so. It's gonna be a big disqualification. I don't think so. I, I I don't think that Devin has uh, uh, the power like the tank did to get him on the liver shot. I don't think so. The thing is, it's not about liver shot. Like he's gonna be getting frustrated, and he's just he, he's just gonna look for a way out. And instead of quitting this time, he's just gonna do no, all man. Watch that, that was at the, at the press conference when he walked up and he and, uh, and Devin he's talking a lot of crap to him. Beat your head, blah blah blah. blah. Uh, and he and he stopped and he went crying. And he left his way. I get all that, but uh, the reality is, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna say. 
Garcia is going to come here. He sell the fight. If, That's what he has to do. If, if he coming out here and he's going to show. Uh, what's his you name? You know that one time we were in New York, there was that one homeless dude, and he was like talking a bunch of shit, and we walked, we walked up the, up, off the train in New York, and he was like, kiss the ring. Yeah. If, oh, if, fuck, if, yeah. If, 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 if Brian <laughs> wins by disqualification, if Brian loses by disqualification, it's time to kiss the ring. I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I don't know how you got that. I've never heard anybody. Has anybody predicted disqualification? I don't I, think so. I've never, I never, it's the first time I've ever predicted a fight by, by disqualification. Are you in love? I don't know. Something's I'm, not right. I am in love. I know, but Man boxing alone. and hockey and hockey, so forth and so forth. And others. Disqualification? Yeah. Can you bet on that? I want to. Are you serious? I'll put, I'll put 100 on it. Man. Easy. That's easy. You better go with your boy that says, that's easy how, money. What, what, what he bet draw? That's, that's easy what, money. What, what, what Johnny says, I'm betting on a draw. Bro. Yeah, it comes yeah. out ahead. But we got to switch out yeah. my boy, Philippians 413. Philippians God bless you, man. He says, Thank you. I'm still heated. Over Canelo that keeps ducking that smoke, he can't put out what Dave Benavidez. Damn right. Say that again, Philippians. Tell him again. I'm mm. with you on that one. Mm, okay. Talking about fucking man, talking about that man, Mangia fights this and that, making this. Well, you know, Mangia said. Mangia, you just made a video. I was watching Mangia, it. Canelo Mangia, Mangia came out recently. And he said, you know, what Mangia said, Mangia said, you know, I I got this fight because I, I I got a hard work and respect. I respect Canelo, so I got the fight. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> You know what? I want that coffee to me, Bradley, and I really like about him. The other day when I was watching it, it wasn't matter who he's fighting. He says he does not like fights that go into the ring and every round they're shaking hands and mm. doing this. He said, when you go in there. It's not time to be friends. Yeah, you're there to handle your business and beat the shit out of him. So all these fighters, including Mangia, including uh, uh, Charlo, that respect Canelo, that already means that they're going to lose the fight and give Canelo the, the stars and whatever. Exactly. Um Lord Zed says Ryan is reminding me of Victor Ortiz. Lots of potential, but will quit again. And you know oh, what? Wow. He couldn't have said it Holy any better. That's, that's, that, 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 he's, he, I remember him. He gives me Victor Ortiz vibes. He gives you vibes like that? Yes. Holy shit. Yes. Good point, man. I didn't think that. So, but I'm still buying from the guy from uh, Victorville. Hyro says, BT, you, you, you always say PBC fighters are inactive, but Kermit Moen is literally going to fight twice in less than three months. Yeah, but Hyro, he's not a PBC fighter. He's made the promotions. So there you go. But it's it, it's all it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. No, nope. He, guys who are signed exclusively to Al Heyman don't have Leonard Ellerby standing in their fucking corner. <laughs> but Ellen said, "My boy shall put seats." So my man put ass in the seat. You're wrong there. I recently just saw Kermamo and got scored by Jack Tapora in a sparring session. Were well, you were there? Oh wow. Kermel Kermel was supposed to come down here to South Florida, so I was, you know I was supposed to help him set up some sparring down here when he came. Yeah. Um, Canelo is taking on the number two, or what? Can yeah. Canelo is taking on. The, I mean, look, Mungia yeah. is not a fight that. No, please, people don't. The public does not want to see Canelo fight Mungia. I don't give a fuck with number one, one plus 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 whatever, eight plus plus, plus plus. He's not fighting what the public wants. He's making excuses like a bitch. Damn, I, I respect him. He tell him how you feel. Really. Tell, tell him how you a really lot feel. of stuff. He's done that. But he's fucking avoiding Benavides. I don't care what you tell me. I, I hate guys that come in here or or, or my son's thing and dick ride Canelo and sit Is there. Is it possible? And they go, oh, I'm, I'm, this I'm, guy doesn't, this, I want to play devil's advocate for a this, second. This, hold on. This fool don't know what he's talking is it, about. Is it possible? The reality is he doesn't want to get his ass kicked by a young buck. Simple as that. Is it? Is it? Is it possible though? Is it possible? Because when when I interviewed when I uh, when I interviewed Jose Benavides Senior. By the way, respect to Senior. I like Senior. Mm -hmm. But he had a very interesting quote that I think may have went over a lot of people's head. He said, we're more famous not fighting Canelo than we are fighting Canelo. So I thought it was a very telling statement because it almost sounded like, well, they're okay, they're content to not fight him because they're getting a lot of publicity by not fighting him. Well, I mean, at some point, yeah. But the way I, it sounded. I'm yeah, saying yeah, the way yeah. it sounded. Yeah, because it, because yeah, because you got Canelo. Canelo, in the same sense, that Benavides, of course, he's going to get a lot, of, a lot of clout because of it because – Canelo is supposedly the face of Boston. Now, now, Richard wants me to ask you, Pops, why hasn't Benavidez activated his mandatory spot on Canelo? I don't know, but why has Canelo activated all his? Canelo's a champion. He doesn't got to activate anything. Okay, the bottom line is, <laughs> don't come in here with why, why Benavidez hasn't done this. Why Benavidez done that. The bottom line is, why is Canelo the face of boxing? He can get whatever the fuck he wants. He's not the face of boxing. There is no face okay, of boxing. Okay, whatever you want to call it. There's no face he of boxing. He gets whatever he wants, who he takes he wants. Why is he getting all that? But the public wants him to fight Benavides. Okay, how many times we've seen active fighters 
avoid them, man. He said, continue crickets. fight. <laughs> got you. Got you there. What is it? Yeah, he couldn't answer. Expo- exposed. Yeah, exposed. Yeah, exposed. I'm not answering that. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm no. telling you. No There's one. fighters that didn't and, fight and, and by the way, make, sure, they, make, make sure make sure you guys show respect to the number yeah. one pound for pound Canelo fanboy in the world. Yeah. Pete Kalibic cousin. Yeah. No one wants to watch Boots fight any of those other guys. Let Canelo fight Mungia. That's right. Go, 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 Canelo, Canelo. Yeah. Don't make this. All I'm saying, don't make excuses for Canelo. A lot now of fighters didn't fight I, them. I, I, didn't, those I didn't see. Well, the, yeah. I, I didn't see this JJ. Yeah. But apparently, Sergey Bochuk called out Jerron Ennis, so uh, I'll have to go check it out for myself and probably hit up Sergey Bochuk and do another interview. Maybe, maybe get him to call him out here on True School because uh, I, that's a really good fight at 54. Um, I like that interview with him too. He's cool. Yeah. A cool, cool, laid back dude. Yeah. Just a good fighter. You yeah. know, guy that goes about his business the yeah. right way. Yeah. Um, good win for him over Brian Mendoza. Yeah. Uh, but as far as that fight, man, I think Boots would have to move around a little bit more in that fight because Boachuk stayed. He stayed right on top of you. You know, even though he's like an Eastern European, he's trained. He's trained all of his professional coaches been Mexican. So Manny Robles, Abel Sanchez. So. <laughs> You know, so he, knows the he still has that he Eastern the European recipe. style, yeah. But but yeah. kind of comes out a little Mexican. Yeah, sometimes. he knows the recipe. So I think it'd be a good fight. But yeah, yeah. I, I would favor Boots in that one. Yeah, good fight. Boots will Boots have the speed advantage. Yeah. I already talked about it. I talked about Majumar versus Crawford. It's a good fight. You know, it's probably it's probably a fight that will happen if if he goes fifty four next. You know, but um, the cello ever come on back? I don't care. No, I, I don't. I don't really care, honestly. No. Um, like I like, I like the Charlos. I, I like their energy they bring to the sport. But like, you're talking about uh, Jamel. Not I don't Jamel. give a damn which one. Both of them. Like, I, I, I like the Charlos. He made his money disappear. Just disappear. It's crazy. So you know, hey, I, I, I hope they get everything in their life together. And you know, I lift them yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. God, stuff, bless, but both God them. bless them. Yeah. But like, yeah, just like like once they once you saw Jamal Jamel got the fight against Canelo, didn't even try. He didn't even try to win. Uh, Hyrule says, Carmel is with PBC. He fights on PBC, and you always say there's no dates, but he's getting dates. Milga has had has has, has had shows. At, he hasn't had any shows at Sam's Town, so you're exposed. <laughs> tell him, Hyrule. This is a PBC legend right here. He knows everything about PBC. It is what you it is. You can't tell Hyrule about PBC. I don't have the mental yeah. fortitude to argue yeah. with Hyrule, who wants to always dick ride PBC at every drop of the hat possible. But look, yeah. look guys, listen. Um, I'm not trying to make this too long of a live today. I just wanted to get the solid hour and some change in because I got to get some rest um, yeah. and get to other things as well. But uh, listen, we'll be live tomorrow. Um, tomorrow we will discuss the Saudi card at length, and I'll be doing my pound my pound for pound list tomorrow. So that should be it. The day after will yeah. be the Innaway versus uh, the, the Innaway Crawford raffle yeah. at the end of that live. And then Thursday, we'll have Sean here to wrap up the 90, the 90 days. So uh, definitely keep it locked, man. I appreciate everybody that, that's been yeah, supporting. Yeah, thank you for all your co- comments. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, was it Richard the one that said about the crickets? Shout out to you. And the fighters, top fighters don't fight there, man. Doesn't skip that. So that's kind of one of them. Anyways, yeah. I respect, your com- so look, I respect look, all listen, your comments. Listen, you guys be blessed. Um, more content on the way. Check out the shorts, check out the videos, check out everything. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just getting from Daniel. So until next time, take your eyes, guys.